Hello my dear viewers. In this video I will dwell on the definitions of prebiotics and probiotics. Their benefits, the causes of dysbacteriosis, that is harmful bacterial growth in our intestines and the importance of prebiotics in the treatment. Our friends living in our gastrointestinal digestive system. Today science knows that the total number of microbes in the human body is many times greater than the number of body's own cells. The entire microflora of an average person can weigh 2 kilograms and most of this microflora is in the gastrointestinal system, especially in the large intestine. All intestinal microbes can be divided into three groups based on their ability to cause microorganism, human disease. Saprophytic living creatures that feed on that organic material. And the other one is opportunistic or conditionally pathogenic microorganisms. And the last one, pathogenic microorganisms. In a healthy person, saprophytic microorganisms are permanent inhabitants in the intestine, which do not have pathogenic factors. These are good, friendly microbes that a person lives with. Opportunistic bacteria found in healthy people, but in small quantities, and therefore do not lead to the development of the disease. Saprophytic bacteria in the intestines of a healthy person prevent their proliferation. These opportunistic bacteria can begin to actively multiply in the gut under favorable conditions and or increase their pathogenic factors that may eventually become the cause of the disease. Pathogenic microbes, these are the microbes that should, shouldn't be in the intestines of a healthy person. We are not going to address that in this video. In a healthy person, there is a certain balance between saprophytic and opportunistic microorganisms. How is this balance deteriorated? This bacteriosis, this biosis, occurs when this balance is deteriorated. But this is not a diagnosis or disease. This bacteriosis is a condition in which there are fewer friendly bacteria and more opportunistic bacteria. And they can develop disease causing properties. Or in general, such microorganisms cannot be found in the intestines of a healthy person. Why does this bacteriosis occur? Inflammatory diseases in the body can lead to the development of this bacteriosis due to factors such as fermentopathy, allergies, malnutrition, stress. But the most negative effect on the intestinal microflora occurs with antibiotic treatment. Antibiotics destroy not only pathogens, but also friendly bacteria. That is, they kill the good intestinal microflora, which leads to this bacteriosis. What are probiotics? Probiotics are beneficial microorganisms, bacteria, parasites, and fungi yeast that keep your gut and body healthy. They are similar to microorganisms that naturally live in, live in our bodies. The term probiotics means for the living. The concept was first introduced by Elia Meshnikov, the father of probiotics. In the early 1920s, Meshnikov studied centuries-old people in Bulgaria and found a common link between probiotic consumption and body health and long life. There are many different 
probiotics available. Probiotics differ by the type of them, the strains found in probiotics, and the number of CFU, colony forming unit. CFUs are the colony forming units. This shows how many bacteria in probiotics have the ability to divide and form colonies. In other words, CFUs are the number of viable bacteria in a product that proliferation has been finished. Prebiotics and probiotics. Let's talk about what are they. Probiotics are alive, active cultures capable of proliferation in numbers, whereas prebiotics serve as a food source of probiotics and do not proliferate. The difference between probiotics and prebiotics can be learned by a plant example. If your gut is thought like a field of flowers, probiotics are the each seed you plant. Prebiotics work like water and fertilizer, which are used to promote the growth of flowers or probiotics. As the flower grows, it will pollinate and multiply over time. You wouldn't think about planting flowers in empty soil. It makes sense to plant seeds first and then add fertilizer. The same thing can be said about creating a healthy gut environment for friendly bacteria to thrive. Remember, there is no use adding fertilizer to a flower garden with no seeds at all. Are prebiotics more important than probiotics? Prebiotics foods are one of the most important things that we can focus our diet on. Prebiotics have numerous health benefits, such as improving gut health, inhibiting cancer, improving the immune system, and preventing obesity and have shown effective improvements in 91% of all human trials. It has also been shown that they reduce symptoms of a bowel-related problems, such as ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, and celiac disease. Food sources for prebiotics. Prebiotics are made up of indigestible, carbohydrates, fibers, that are used by bacteria in the colon to provide health benefits. A prebiotic found naturally in foods cannot be broken down or absorbed by the digestive system. The beneficial bacteria use this fiber as a food source through a process called fermentation. Prebiotics are considered functional foods because they help treat diseases and improve health conditions, in which they provide numerous health benefits. Currently, there are three main documented types of prebiotics, inulin, oligosaccharides, and arabinogalactans. Examples of food sources containing prebiotics are those. Inulin and oligosaccharides are short-chain polycosaccharides or carbohydrate chains that provide complete intestinal health at different locations in the colon. By increasing and maintaining good bacterial populations, the body becomes stronger against pathogenic bacteria and yeasts that can lead to variety of adverse health consequences. Arabinogalactans are a class of long, densely branched, high molecule polysaccharides. Many edible and inedible plants are rich sources of Arabinogalactans, including, for example, leeks, radishes, carrots, tomatoes, coconut, and coconut flour. The bark of the large tree is the best source of these 
and it's often used in making prebiotic supplements. I hope this information will be useful to you. Please don't forget to share if you like it. Stay healthy and happy.